Morning, everybody. Thanks for joining me as we take a look at your uh, forecast for tomorrow's snowstorm tonight into tomorrow. That's for February, Friday, February 25th snowstorm. Does look like we're going to see um, our most significant snowstorm of the year. On average, this will have more snow over more of an area than any storm we've had so far this winter, I think. Um, certainly some places uh, in northern uh, Rutland and Windsor County that got snow and a lot of us got sleep about a month ago. Um, those areas will see maybe not more snow than they did. But otherwise, most of us, this is probably our biggest snowstorm of the year so far. Um, and uh, we talked about, we've uh, figured out a lot of the details. I've got a precipitation map for you, updated precipitation map. I've got an updated snowfall map for you. And then I've got a town by town snowfall forecast for you. So lots to come on this storm um, because it is certainly going to be a high impact event. Travel will be very difficult tomorrow. So let's take a look at what's going on. First of all, on radar, we've got, here's our front, our, our kind of a storm our, that's running out to sea south of us today. This storm will swing out. This is not act, the actual main storm yet. Um, but connected to it kind of along this uh, stationary boundary or boundary that's been moving slowly south and east is our area of low pressure, um, which is developing here across Louisiana and southern Arkansas. Um, also, here's our upper level energy to hit uh, to come behind it. Let's take a look at that on satellite. And you can see what's really going to happen here. The southern jet stream here, real active, lots of moisture, um, and we can continue to see this. There's actually not a lot of energy here, but lots of moisture. And in the northern stream, we have some a very energetic um, area in the upper in the northern stream of the jet stream, which is heading across and it's going to trigger surface low pressure development where that moisture boundary is. Also, we've got a huge temperature contrast as we move very cold air in from Canada. Um, and then that's really pushed quite far south here. And then we still have uh, warm summer like air almost here. I Maybe mean, not summer for the Gulf Coast, but uh, certainly spring like air across the southeastern United States and that contrast and the energy is going to come together to give us a significant storm. Um, not an overly strong storm from an energy standpoint, but certainly going to have a lot of moisture with it. And really when it comes to snowfall totals, that's what matters in some ways, sometimes more even than exactly how strong the storm is going to get. So let's take a look at the storm track. Um, basically, the storm track has not changed. What has changed and what we talked about yesterday in terms of sleep is how quickly is the energy transfer going to happen, right? So this evening, we've got our storm here in like western Tennessee, and already we're starting to get some hints of some surface redevelopment here. Um, and basically, it's going to go happen a little slower than um, than you would sometimes expect for this to happen. Sometimes it's going to be a real quick transfer, but it's going to happen faster than we thought yesterday, um, as this area of low pressure is going to die out a little quicker, which is why the sleep line has moved a little further south. Essentially, the longer the primary low stays strong, the more warm air can surge east of it, um, not at the surface so much, but at the mid-levels, and that's what will give us sleep. And the faster the surface low over, uh, or the coastal low develops, the faster um, that flow at the mid-levels turns instead of from the south to a northerly direction, and that'll hold snow in um, for us here across southern Vermont. And I think um, really by Friday morning, um, the low is really starting to die here over the primary low is really starting to die over western Pennsylvania, and our low is really starting to get going here just off the coast of New Jersey. Um, and by uh, Friday afternoon, yes, there'll still be some remnants of an uh, a weak, very weak area of low pressure, but basically the energy transfer has happened and the winds will have turned to the north and that'll hold in uh, snow for us here across southern Vermont, I think. Um, and I think the sleet line really doesn't get further north and then about western Massachusetts, except for if you're in the Brattleboro or Bennington area, I think you can get a tiny bit of sleet, but it'll just be sleet on top. When we look at snowfall totals, you see you're really not that much different than any of the rest of us. So that's what the track looks like. Let's take a look at um, uh, that precipitation map. Like I said, I think Brattleboro, down to Vernon, areas like that could see a little bit of sleep mixed in. Again, at the very end of the storm, really not that big a deal. And a little bit of sleep potentially mixed in in the Bennington area as well. Um, and down to Ponell um, would have a chance of getting a little bit of sleep. But again, not really enough to hold back uh, uh, precipitation amounts too, too much. Um, and most of us will be basically light and fluffy snow. Um, the only and uh, as we go, let's take a look at the snowfall totals, and I can uh, talk a little bit more about some of the details of that. So, uh, also we have pushed the snowfall totals north a little bit. The changes from this map yesterday, they've moved north a little bit more, as I think the heaviest precipitation will basically cover the four southern counties entirely of Vermont, basically. So everybody gets about eight to twelve inches of snow, I think, or more, depending on where you are exactly. Um, as you head further north of that, as you get up into uh, at the I-89 corridor and north of I-89. Um, and also, if, uh, if you head up along uh, the Champlain Valley here, um, we start to get a little further away from the storm, and totals are a little bit lighter, but even a pretty good snowfall forecast, even up into central and almost in northern Vermont with this storm. Um, but for where for, the, for our forecast area, what we focus on here, this from southern four counties, basically um, higher elevation, we're looking at 10 to 16. That was 10 to 14 yesterday. 
um, and it was cut off a little bit for the very far southern parts of the greens here in Vermont. Uh, but I think everybody here gets about 10 to 16 inches, and I think um, some of the skiers can even top over that 16 a little bit here. Uh, pretty good dumping for the skiers, which really needed after we've lost a lot of snow uh, on the skiers over the last couple of weeks. This will really refresh things and hopefully uh, lead us into a pretty good march for some spring skiing. Um, uh, if you're not if you're not elevation or if you're kind of in the very northern part of the greens, more like eight to twelve inches on average. So a pretty good dumping for all of us. Uh, in terms of the locations west of the Green Mountains, Fairhaven, uh, you're looking at about eight to ten inches as you're kind of on that northern uh, fringe of uh, of the heavier precipitation. Pittsford, same kind of thing, about nine to eleven. Hollett's looking at about nine to eleven. Manchester, I think eleven to thirteen. As you head a little further south, Shaftesbury, same thing, eleven to thirteen. And then Bennington, ten to twelve, held back a tiny bit by sleet at the end. But again, see, you're still at a, almost a foot of snow in Bennington, so really, um, mostly a snow event for everybody. Um, all right, let's take a look at the Green Mountains themselves. Pittsfield, looking at 11 to 13 inches of snow as we get a little bit of elevation effect, but there's not going to be a huge elevation effect with this storm. Um, it will play a slight role, but not a huge role. Plymouth, 12 to 14 inches of snow. Ludlow, I think 13 to 15 inches of snow. A place like Windhall, 14 to 6 inches of snow. That's the 14 to 16 inches of snow. Except for the ski areas, I think a place like Windhall, Peru, somewhere in that range will probably be where we maximize things out. Searsburg, 13 to 15. Woodford, which would normally be a place that does that a lot of times on a storm, I think they'll be just um, uh, held back just a little bit by being closer to that sleet line. Um, I don't think they'll actually see any sleet in Woodford, but I think it'll hold back the total. So I think a place like Windhall or Peru probably tops out at the snowfall total there. Reedsboro, 12 to 14 inches of snow as well. Uh, let's take a look at, oops, sorry, let's look at east of the Green Mountains. Sharon, 7 to 9 inches of snow, a little further north, you know, a little further away from the storm, so a little bit less there, although still a good dumping. Heartland, same thing, 8 to 10 inches of snow. Chester, 10 to 12 inches of snow. Westminster, 9 to 11 at lower elevations, a little bit of a shield of, of a uh, of a shielding effect along the uh, Connecticut River, but again, pretty 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 minimal in in that regard. Vernon also is a place that would see something like that with seven to nine inches and a little bit of sleep possible there. Brattleboro as well, eight to ten inches or so with a little bit of sleep possible in Brattleboro. As we head to uh, the ski areas, skiers will do real well out of this. Killington gets a little bit less just because it's north a little further away from the storm, although still 13 to 15 inches of snow for Killington. I think Okemo looks at 14 to 16 inches of snow, same at Bromley, about 14 to 16. Magic, a little bit lower elevation, so 13 to 15 inches of snow, but pretty good dumping. Stratton probably and Mount Snow probably maximize out of the storm, 15 to 17. Wouldn't be surprised to see a foot and a half at Stratton or at Mount Snow out of the storm at all. Um, and then in terms of details, precipitation begins between about 12 a.m., and 2 a.m. tonight, heaviest precipitation between 4 a.m. and 10 a.m., looking like an almost entirely snow event, uh, snowfall event at this point. Snowfall rates of 1 to 2 inches per hour tomorrow morning, maybe even some 3-inch amounts for briefly. So um, if you're out there, you're going to need to definitely be careful on the roads. It's going to be very hard to drive tomorrow morning. Uh, snow comes to an end Friday afternoon. Um, the heaviest snow comes to an end by probably about noon tomorrow. Could accumulate a little bit more after that. But the good thing about that is it means that if you're out there, um, the road should be getting better throughout the day, although it'll still be a tough go of it Friday afternoon. Snow will be light and fluffy. Um, what could change with this forecast? We could get a maximum if we get a real heavy band. That's certainly still a chance. Um, right now, there's really nothing forecasting that. However, um, this is the kind of storm that we could get a heavy band that sets up that could mean that we overperform in some places. I don't think that's necessarily a guarantee, but I think, and then if sleet made its way in, that could lower some amounts in southern uh, in the southern counties. If we did get a band to set up, I would think it would set up right about on the borders between um, Rutland and Bennington and Windham and Windsor County, kind of on a stripe across that area. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a band that set up there that maybe made us overperform a little bit. Um, on the totals that we're talking about there. But I think basically we're pretty locked in on a pretty, uh, pretty models have been very consistent with the storm, pretty well forecasted. So uh, I will be back tomorrow morning with a look at your weekend forecast and include some details on the storm. I'm not going to be, I'm going to be doing that from a remote location. So it'll look a little bit differently, but it'll be close to this. Um, also, uh, if you have any questions today, um, you can certainly feel free to email me, uh, send me a message on uh, social media, something like that. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, I'd encourage you to do that. It helps make sure that you uh, don't miss any of these videos and also helps other people discover my channel. And finally, um, thanks to my patrons who help support what I do here. And if you're interested in becoming a patron, um, those are people who support financially what I do here. There's some benefits to that. Um, in the, and there's a link to my patron page in the description below, uh, below which talks about what uh, you get as being a patron and also talks about um, uh, some of the things that uh, – uh, some of the ways that being a patron helps uh, me and you out. All right. Uh, thanks for joining me. I'll be back tomorrow morning with a look at your weekend forecast.